I can't believe what I'm looking at. This is completely shocking and saddening to me. Do you remember this video and this location? Nearly four months ago, I was at that location to make that video. And I was there because the reservoir was partially drained and it was a site that I never saw before. And without knowing anything officially, Viewers and myself figured that it was drained due to either a dam inspection or dam repairs. Well, just a few days ago, a viewer of mine sent me a photo from that location, and what I saw in that photo left me nearly speechless. So I'm headed there right now to see for myself, and of course, you're welcome to come along with me as well. The most efficient way for me to get there is by using my Engway Engine Pro e-bike. I do have a backpack full of gear, including my drone, to get some aerial shots. And we're going to continue down the trail here, and once we do arrive at the location, we'll see what the situation's like. We arrived and the sight is even worse than the picture that was shared with me. Ugh, I'm in disgust. Before I show you what's going on, which you could probably imagine by the noise, the reservoir is drained about 90% if not more. The only water that's in here is what's flowing down from the mountain. And I don't think it's ever going to be filled up again. The reason why is because they are demolishing this reservoir. The grand castle-like structure that was there is no more. Oh my god, what a sad sight. I honestly can't believe I'm seeing this. Like, I'm in total disbelief. There was a total of four or five structures. The main one being right there, which was the largest one. And I've always wanted to get inside of it and see what it was like. If I knew this was gonna happen, I would have either asked or even offered to pay money to this construction crew to get a look inside before they did this. But this is total disbelief. I, I, I had no sense that this was going to happen. There's only one remaining structure up there. Spillway no longer serving its purpose. Now since we're here, since they're actively working, I want to see what it's like and show you guys the visuals from the air using Jayhawk, my drone. I'm also going to show some before footage and after so you can see the transformation. But continue watching because afterwards I do have some facts to share with you about this location. Not only about what's taking place right now, but also some stats or specs regarding this particular location. Boy, what a sight. It looks so much different. All that rubble is that main structure.
basically digging in it right now and I can actually see some of the valves and stuff that were inside of it. I'm going to try to get a little bit lower, get a closer look at it. Thankful for having the drone because without it, I wouldn't be able to get these close-up shots like this. And if you look right in the center, you can see the not only the foundation but the pipes, the valves. It has something to do with the controls of the dam here for either routing the water or whatever they had to do for certain things. That's our only glimpse as to what was inside. Just a bunch of valves and pipes. But for how big that building was, I'd imagine there was more than just that. Looking at the area, it looks like they came in through the Naples, through the junkyard. They either created or reopened up the access road. That's how they got all the equipment down here and their shortest route directly to this location. That image right there is an image I thought I'd never see. Even with the water drained, those structures are so iconic and have been there for such a long time. That site right there is a site I thought I'd, I'd never see. Even with the water drained, those structures have been there for a long time. They were so iconic, so beautiful, and now they're no more. I'm almost having a hard time believing it even though it's right here in front of me. Looks like the excavator has the jackhammer on it to break up and pulverize the stone and or concrete. And the one inside with the bucket is just for moving the material. You can also see on the wall here they do have a piece of surveyor's equipment as well. And now we can get a good look at the back side of the spillway now that the water is down significantly lower.
looking at that water discharge too, it looks like they had that valve probably open all the way. There's a lot of water coming out of there, helping keep that level as low as possible because this reservoir is naturally fed. It doesn't drain completely because there's always a water source coming in. Oh, I actually see the other surveyor out there too. And maybe some exposed structures I never saw before. I'll have to fly the drone out there in just a minute. Here's a look at the steps of the spillway. I'm imagining, but without knowing any facts, that they're going to tear that down as well. I'll go out there and show you where the other surveyor is and what I imagine to be some type of structure. Yeah, so they have a surveyor's piece of equipment on top of the levee wall, but then these guys are out here with the equipment as well. Now, there's a pipe we saw my last visit that has those concrete barriers around it and people said that was to keep the pipe weighted down so it doesn't float. It almost appears like something else is out here unless it's just rock formations. Yeah, that's all it is, just rock formations. go to the very end of the reservoir fly in and give one final overall look at this location from the air Those are the abandoned Jessup viaduct and the water flowing underneath is what's feeding this reservoir. So we're going to start right here. I'm going to turn around and just make a slow flight in towards the location that they're working. And this is your overall look at the former reservoir. Ninety percent drained, one structure remaining. I do have some stats and information I want to share with you. So, for starters, I had no idea this was happening. If it wasn't for the viewer of mine who sent me the picture and happened to have been here to check it, I probably would have never even known about it until long afterwards. That's a surprise to me because, not always, but typically, when these reservoirs get decommissioned, it's public knowledge, typically. The um, Lower Run Reservoir along 115, that was publicly announced. It was even on the news that they were decommissioning it, turning it into a wildlife reserve. Even the Egerton Reservoir was announced that they were gonna decommission that. So 
it's not always put out there freely for everyone to, to know about it, but typically it's somewhere for people to be able to find out, to find out the status of a reservoir. This one went unknown. It was really kept hush for a reason, which I don't know why. Being that I was here four months ago and the water was drained, as I said earlier, I thought it was for dam inspection or dam repairs. I never envisioned or imagined it was because they were going to demolish it and decommission it. So I do have some information that I got off the website. So for starters, this is known as the Dunmore Number no. 7 Reservoir. I've been here before. I never said the name in my videos just because at that time it was an active reservoir. But many who are locals know this place, have been here, certainly know the name of it. So it's no secret now, it's the Dunmore Number no. 7 Reservoir. It was built slash completed in 1872. This reservoir, those structures are over 100 years old. Actually, about 150 years old, if my math is correct, off the top of my head. The dam length across is 340 feet. The height from top to bottom, 45 feet. The max storage that this could hold is 570 acres. Normal storage is 310 acres. This was last inspected June of 2020. At that time, it was rated as high hazard potential and the condition assessment was poor. So three years ago was the last inspection and I'm guessing at that point they deemed it being poor condition, hazardous, unsafe, maybe not worth sticking more money into. So there's only two outcomes I see at this point. Number one is that they're going to reconfigure this reservoir and re-alter it and make new structures and keep it an active reservoir, or it's going to be completely decommissioned, demolished, and turned into a natural area. That I don't know. If any of you watching do have any insight on this location as to what the outcome or future is going to be, certainly share it down below so myself and the other viewers can have an idea what the future does hold. But honestly, I am shocked and saddened. This was such an iconic place. I've been here probably close to a dozen times in my lifetime. And it was one thing seeing the water drained like we did last time, even though it wasn't this low. It's all another thing knowing that these buildings that were built over a hundred years ago are no more, never to be seen again. But thankfully, they're gonna be preserved through my videos and others who have been here. I have pictures, I have footage over the years, so future generations will be able to see what once stood here. But I am really curious though, why they did this. Because from my understanding, this was an active reservoir up until present times. So something changed. And unfortunately, there's nobody close by for me to ask. I also don't want to disturb them while they're working. And I was hoping to get here the day of or day after that photo was sent to me because that's when they just started demolishing that building. But the day I received it, I was busy. The next day it rained all day. So today, which is three or four days later, was the earliest I could get here. And it just, I know it's just a reservoir. It's just material structures. But to me, I don't know. It's more meaningful because I have a lot of memories here. I've done exploring on both sides of it, behind it, below it. I've walked the creek all the way up to here. It's just sad. History just gets wiped away like that by an excavator. 1872 construction, castle-like structure, stone block design, gone. Looks like he's digging down where one of the pipes were, where one of the valves were. And I saw him trying to rip away at that one that's in between the, the concrete walls there, or the stone walls. It's not budging though. I think he's trying to chip away at it section by section. Don't forget all those do go underground and connect somewhere under the reservoir. He's making piles though of piping, metal, kind of separating the materials. And that one that is there that's still existing between the walls, it's, that's like a gate. I've seen that design before where they could turn a handle on top and it'll lower the gate to block the opening or raise it to open it. 
So that's probably one of the control designs or mechanisms for outflow of the various pipes that are here. I've seen that same design very similar at the Egerton Reservoir, which does have the overhead gantry cranes. Yeah, he's actually trying to rip away at it right now. Got the handle part off, he's struggling to get that that wall section off or that hatch covering. They built these things to last. Over 100 years it's been there, it doesn't want to move. Oh yeah, you got it now. Sad to watch. And if anybody out there watching has ever been inside of that structure at any point and you have pictures, please email me. I'd love to see what was inside. Uh, it's a place I've always kind of imagined like, oh, what could be in there? It's such a large, grand castle-looking structure. Castle-looking structure. But if you have ever been in there, even if you don't have a picture, if you could describe it, please email me or message me on Facebook. My links are always down below in the description. I definitely want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think as well. But what I want to do right now, since these levels are significantly lower, we're going to hop back on the bike, go to the back of the reservoir where we went before, but we should be able to see more of the land, specifically the lake bottom. We'll be able to see some things that weren't exposed before. And uh, who knows, maybe those gentlemen who are doing surveyor work may approach me. I'll ask some questions. Maybe we'll get some answers. Let's head over there and see what it's like. And it's more or less just a stream flowing through the lake bottom at this point. And I see those surveyors over there with those pipes that are encased in concrete. It's actually a chilly day too. It's only in the 30s when I got here. It's probably maybe around 40 degrees now. But at least it's sunny. All right, here's our access. Well, this has changed significantly. I'm gonna show you some footage or at least pictures from last time. There's just a little creek right here with the water flowing. I was able to cross on my bike. Well, now the water has moved away and it's kind of carved out the, the land here. I can't cross it now. Yeah, right here. 
is where I crossed last time. So I'm wondering if they altered the path of the water or if it happened naturally. Yeah, it's uncrossable at this point. I think they dug it out. This material wasn't here. And I was actually showing you underwater at this point last time I was here. So I believe they carved this out with machines, filled it in over here, and have made just a direct channel of water flowing towards the, the former spillway up there. So I don't think I could get over there, which is unfortunate. I really want to because it's all dry and exposed at this point. I'll tell you though, the water is crystal clear. It's flowing around that side and that side. So it's almost like an island right there. I think I can actually see marks from the equipment, whether it's tracks or the excavator teeth. Let me snoop around. I'm gonna see if I can find a way to cross. There is a down tree over there, but I don't think it's big enough. And I'm not a tightrope walker. But I'm gonna go further down and see if there's a shallow area. Upstream, it just gets wider and deeper. My only hope is down here to somewhere. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't happen today, I will come back on a weekend when they're not working. I am able to get to the other side and come down that way, but that's worst case scenario. Let me see what I could do. Just before I was about to walk away, I heard some splashing. This is actually eroding in real time. There's little bits of dirt and rocks that are falling in. Normally, back here, water would be right up to that line. Standing where I am, my head would barely be peeking out of the water. What the hell was that? Something just fell from the trees. And look at the colors too. Nice blue skies, got the reds right there. A little bit of the uh, remaining fall foliage. I found a trail that parallels the side of the lake here, or what used to be. It brought me to a dead end. A couple crushed beer cans here. I do want to see if there is access down below here. It's rather thick, but if I could get over there, it'll be worth it. It's actually old bake containers for worms or grubs. So people have been here fishing. Well, I don't know what they're doing, but it sounds like explosions. Uh, you know, I'm looking from here now. I hope I got on drone footage. But at the bottom of that levee wall, there's a, a door there, a hatch. It looks like it's open. I think that's where the water is going in and coming out that pipe that we saw. That's always been submerged in the past. It's my first time seeing that. There's actually a tire embedded in the embankment here. Now, last time I was able to cross and ride out there and get to around over there, that's the farthest point because it was still underwater. And I was also mentioning how the water line on those rocks and boulders are very, uh, really visible, at least from close up. That pipe though, does come out over there. So it looks like it goes, you know, whether you're saying going out or coming in, but it comes down the slope there with those concrete barrels around it, goes underneath all this and then re-emerges back there where we just were. I don't know the purpose of that. Don't know if it's maybe gas or for displacing water in a specific location. It's rather fascinating though. I know there's others out there 
that enjoy seeing stuff like this where you know for the longest time it was submerged underwater and now it's like a whole different landscape because the water is gone and you're able to see what the bottom used to look like and over time which won't take very long nature will reclaim this they'll start growing weeds and grass trees so depending on what they're going to do with this if it's left untouched nature will reclaim it there'll just be a stream flowing through here if they alter it and reconfigure it and do some type of landscaping obviously they're going to control some of that but by next summer this will look really green and lush compared to how it does now i never thought i would be sad over something like this i don't know if that's good or bad but it is how i'm feeling fascinating but sad sad knowing it's never going to come back and if it does it won't be the same modern construction holds no weight to construction of those buildings that was here from the 1800s and i think my math was correct it was just around 150 years so i mean they held up incredibly well for a long time i'm sure repairs were done but for the most part they were original i'm definitely gonna be coming back and checking on this location every few months i am really curious and intrigued as to what they're going to be doing with this location do you think it's going to be kept as a reservoir just more modern or do you think it's going to be left untouched for nature to reclaim or do you think it'll be turned into like a wildlife reserve like the lower run reservoir which is partially like nature reclaiming it but i want to know what you think i i can't go either way because i had no information no facts no knowledge other than what I've seen in the past at some locations and what I'm seeing here today. If that spillway gets torn down, I'm pretty sure it's never gonna be a reservoir again. I think I'm about 60, 40, that it's not gonna be a reservoir anymore. But what I'm gonna do though, sooner than later, on a weekend when they're not working, or at least when work is completed, but I'd rather not gamble how long that's going to take. I will come back. We're going to come down the other side. I do know there's something over there by those cliff faces that I was looking for in the past. I saw it from this side, but when I went to look for it last time with RJ, I couldn't find it. Now I think I have a better chance of finding it, so we may be able to identify what that is, but we'll also be able to get out here and explore the exposed land check out some of those boulders which are grouped right there i'm wondering why those are just right there and nowhere else just some gargantuan boulders you know what maybe they used some of that material for the construction of those buildings of the levee wall the block walls could have came from maybe a, a rocky face that was here and that's what's left of it just thinking of that With that being said, if this is your first time here, well, for one, welcome to my channel. If you are here for the first time, I do encourage you to explore it. I do have playlists, which do categorize my videos, everything from reservoirs to abandoned explorations, Google Maps finds, road trips, roadside finds, train videos, 
a little bit of this and that that I do enjoy doing and that do personally interest me. Now, if you are here for the very first time, you're not subscribed, definitely don't be a stranger. Come back to my channel every so often. I do put out content at least two times a week. I often mix in some shorts here and there and share some photos on my community post as well as my Facebook page, which you can follow. The links are down below in the description. If you are into photography, I do have a second channel, JP Photography, which does feature all things photography. That's also linked down below. And lastly, I just wanna say, if you'd like to show your support, the easiest way to do so is by giving this video or any of my videos that you watch a thumbs up. It's free, only takes a second, and it's your way of telling me that you enjoy what you're watching. And between what I share in my videos and what you share in the comments, we both often learn from each other, and that just makes for an overall better positive experience when watching YouTube. So I learn from you, you learn from me, and I come back to locations and show you what has transformed over time. So as always, I greatly appreciate your support. Thank you once again for watching, especially if you're watching right now to the end of the video. And like always, I'll see you in the next video.